All right. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the show today. My name is Tacola Barrows. Welcome to Walk Worthy Empowerment Podcast Show. If this is your first time here and you just not finding about us, welcome. Make sure you subscribe to our show. Make sure you download and let me know what you think of this episode today. And if you were coming back, welcome back today. So we're continuing our series. We continue in our series from the other week when I was telling you guys that we're going to be understanding our identity in Jesus Christ in this season. And happy new year. Happy new year. Welcome to the new year. As you guys know, I was telling you that this year we have to be rooted in Jesus Christ. I don't know what we need to do to get rooted or whatever needs to get out of our heart, whatever we need to get rid of. It happens now because it's needed. It's it's important for us to do it. And if we don't, it will affect our whole walk. So today we're going to talk about when it comes to understanding our identity, when it comes to being a believer and what do we have access to? As you can see, the title of the episode is what do we have access to as a believer of Jesus Christ? Because a lot of times when we give our life to Christ, and we not explain, I don't know about you guys, but when I first gave my life to Christ, I wasn't explained like, okay, this is your authority. This is your identity. I wasn't taught that. It's not until after, like when I began to study the word and really get to know Holy Spirit and he began to show me more of my authority. I learned about Jesus. I learned more about what Jesus want from me and what I came on earth here to do. I came here with a purpose. I came here knowing my identity, knowing that, hey, listen, you have to rise up and who God calls you to be, or you're going to be swept up by the enemy. And I wasn't having that. So that's why I'm I'm really um excited about this series that we're starting. And let's go ahead and get, get into it. Like, um, let's get started. Like, first and foremost, I'm going to start with what is the spirit of wisdom? You guys know we dive into the Blue Letter Bible app and we dive into it and we really break down these scriptures. So when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to the Hebrew definition of wisdom, in Hebrew it's chokma. So chokma represent you are skilled in war, you're wise. And that's very important to understand as a believer that our authority and when it comes to wisdom, that means God is skilling us for war. He's skilling us for battle. And we're ready for battle when we allow him to fill us with the spirit of wisdom. But if we're walking in this walk and we're not understanding that we have access to the spirit of wisdom through the Holy Spirit, then we cannot be skilled for war. And we all know we are battles in the war field. We are battles in the war zone here when we come to Christ, right? It's not all pretty and roses and it's cute and fun. No, like we're ready for battle, whatever comes our way. So we have to know that the spirit of wisdom, we have access to it through Jesus Christ. And that comes with a knowledge and understanding of what wisdom is and how to access wisdom. Because it's easy to know the definition of it. It's easy to know, okay, now I know I have access to wisdom. So what is it? How do we access it? It says in Exodus 31, 3, and I have filled him with the spirit of God and wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manners of workmanship. So it comes with understanding knowledge and all matters of workmanship. So we can't do nothing without the spirit of wisdom. So today, as you listen to this episode, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with the spirit of wisdom, give you a double dose, give you a double portion. If, even if you feel like you operate in the spirit of wisdom or you're wise, remember last week we talked about a real fool in, in, in our own eyes, right? So the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto us. So as we seek God first and we put him first, we will have access to the spirit of wisdom. So I want you guys to really understand this. And when we understand it, then we can operate in the power of God, the fullness of, of the power of God. A lot of times we say, oh, thank you, God. 
It was a powerful move of God. But do you really understand what happens under the power of God? Things change. Things shift. We're going to understand that today. In this series, I want to make sure that we have a better understanding and the outcome of our authority in Jesus Christ and the power of God and how to move in it. So what is the mighty power of God? I'm glad you asked. Okay. First and foremost, it's the power to perform miracles. So we could perform miracles through the power of God. God is still a miracle working God. He don't change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when we have this understanding, we understand that we can operate in excellence through the power of God. We can operate in influence. It brings influence and riches and wealth. This is the power of God. So we want to be wealthy, right? We want to walk, walk in influence, but that comes through the power and knowledge of God. So if we don't operate in our power, we don't operate in the spirit of wisdom, we don't operate in the knowledge of God and understanding, we cannot access wealth. As believers of Jesus Christ, we have to understand that our authority and everything that lies in it is in the power of God. And in order to access wealth, we have to understand these things through knowledge and wisdom. This is so good. Another word for power. I'm going to break this thing down for y'all today, okay? Another word for power is abundance, miracles, strength, ability. So you have the ability to create. You have the power to create abundance through Jesus. We we are strengthened through the power of God. So you, if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling like your faith is dwindling, if you feel like your body is 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 feeling weak you put on the power of god you put on the anointing of god through knowledge wisdom but we have to know we have access to this this is why i'm breaking this down today because if you walk around not knowing you have access to this how can you walk in the power of god how can we walk in the power of god if we have no clue that we have access to it so um, I'm glad today that I'm able to share this because it's very important to understand this because a lot of times throughout my journey, I had no clue about the power of God. I had no clue about my authority like that until I begin to seek because the Bible says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, all these things will be added unto us, right? So as these things are added, as you seek first, you, the spirit of wisdom is added unto you. The spirit of knowledge, understanding. The power of God is moved through you, through this. But you have to understand your authority in Jesus Christ. If you don't understand that, you cannot operate in these anointings and into the spirit of God. This is so good. Thank you, Jesus. And it says in Ephesians, 2 19 now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god that's who we are we're no longer foreigners we have access we are fellow citizens with jesus with the saints and the members of the household of god this is very important to understanding our identity in jesus Jesus Christ, because we might came from, from a family. We probably felt dealt with rejection. We probably dealt with rejection from our parents. We probably dealt with rejections from friends, family. But when we come to Jesus Christ, we are accepted. We are adopted as sons of Christ. And we come into it knowing this knowledge and understanding that we are fellow citizenships. We are fellow citizens with Jesus Christ. We're no longer foreigners. Because the blood that was shed on Calvary. So it's very important to understand this episode today. That your identity in Jesus Christ. And how to access the power of God. And the mighty power. And the spirit of wisdom. And a lot of times if we don't know these things. Then it could hinder us in our walk. We would get frustrated as believers. And in this season we can't get frustrated. Because we have too much work to do. The harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. 
So if you keep looking back, if you keep looking back on your walk and your journey and you looking at it in the in a defeat, you're going to get frustrated. But if you begin to seek first the kingdom of God and you look for you ask God to fill you with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, power, we have access to strength, abundance, wealth. We are skilled. This is what we need in our walk with God. But if we don't walk in our authority, it's easy to be fooled if we won't if we don't walk in our authority. And in this new season, we cannot be fooled. We have to make sure that we understand our authority in Jesus Christ. And last but not least, we have access to an inheritance through God, our inheritance. And we can find that in Numbers 32, 18, it said, We will not return to our homes until every one of the children of Israel has received his inheritance. So they was determined. They had an understanding that, hey, we have an inheritance. We have to fight for this thing. Many of us are bloodline breakers. Are you taking your walk seriously? Are you really taking that? And you really bond God in heaven to make sure that your bloodline, you reach that place where you receive the inheritance of God. Because God says right here, we have an inheritance. But how bad do you want it? How bad you going to fight for that inheritance? How bad you want to make sure that you reach that destiny place that God has for us, right? But we have to access these things first. Because if we pray for spiritual wisdom, we pray for knowledge and understanding of Jesus, our eyes will be open. You're going to begin to see more. You're going to get revelation. Remember, our eyes is the gateway to our soul. So you're going to begin to get more revelation and understanding of who Jesus Christ and who he called you to be. Because now your eyes are open. Now you can see. And then you will increase in understanding because now you have a better revelation of who you are. You have a better revelation of your inheritance. And now you're able to see through the lenses of God, through the Holy Ghost. This is, listen. <laughs> I pray y'all get this today. Listen, not only that, we will increase in knowledge. So when we have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, come on. We're able to walk in the fullness thereof. One decoration I made over myself for this year, I said, I'm walking in. I ain't saying I'm walking in too, because we got to be mindful of our words. I say I'm walking in the fullness of who God created me to be. Not walking into, I'm walking in it right now. It don't take God long to do the things that he want to do over our life. He said one day is a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. It all goes down to our belief. Would you believe him? Would you believe that you're able to walk into the power? Are you? Do you believe him that you are skilled in war? Do you believe him that you're mighty in battle? Do you believe him that you have an inheritance? Do you believe him when he said, hey, I called you to be more than a conqueror. Do you believe him? Do you believe him when he said he called you to an inheritance? What is an inheritance? Inheritance in Hebrew have a lot of different definitions. Number one, inheritance is property. We're called to real estate. We're called to ownership. We're not, we not called to be the borrower. We're called to be the lender, not the borrower. We're called to be wealthy in the kingdom of God. Portion. So. Your inheritance in God is your portion. It's our portion. Come on. It belongs to us. In Numbers, he said, we will not return to our homes until we receive, until everyone receives their, their inheritance. So you got to have that mentality. <laughs> so what else comes with inheritance? Uh, and estate. You have an estate. Okay. Jesus said, I go and prepare a, a way for you, for us in heaven. So we have an estate. And God said we would experience heaven on earth. So we call down that I estate from heaven unto earth. <laughs> this is so good. Possession. I'm going to end with this. Possession. 
We have to possess the promised land. We have to possess our inheritance. We have to possess the things that belong to us in the realm of the spirit that comes through knowledge, that comes through operating through wisdom, that comes through operating through the power of God. That's the only way we could possess this thing. <laughs> That's the only way we can possess it. In Deuteronomy 12, 9, it says, For yet, for as yet you have not come to the rest and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. It's given to us, guys. This is not something that we got to beg for our inheritance. No, this is given to us. But how bad do we want it? How bad? How much do we believe, God, that it's our time to possess and to understand that our identity in Jesus Christ and how to access our wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, and our godly inheritance through Jesus Christ. And you guys know I do not leave no episode without giving you the tools you need to add faith to your purpose. And you guys know that, like last week I told you, we're going to be doing the tools a little different because we have to speak what we want to see in this season. Whatever it is that we want to see, we have to speak it. And in that case, we're going to be speaking some powerful decoration over ourselves today. As last week, we spoke some things. And this week, we're going to speak it again. All right. So, I hope you guys got your Bev Tucker book. Um, it's very important that you get this for this new series. If you get it on... Um, on Amazon, it's available on Amazon. I love this book. It's a deliverance manual. And it also is a powerful book to teach you about your identity. So we're going to be taking decorations from here. And we're going to be declaring it over our life. So the first one is, I am an ambassador for Christ. That's in 2 Corinthians 5.20. I am anointed and know the truth. That's in 1 John 2.20. I am anxious for nothing. I am the apple of his eye. That's in Zechariah 2 8. I am the aroma of Christ. That's in 2 Corinthians 2 15. I am not ashamed. That's in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. I am assured of success. That's in Proverbs 16 3. I have authority and power over the devil. Come on, I'm gonna say that one again. I have authority and power over the devil. That's in Luke 9, 1. I am baptized and clothed with Christ. That's in Galatians 3, 27. I am beautiful. Come on, come on. I am beautiful. That's in Ecclesiastes 3, 11. I am becoming a mature person. That's in Ephesians 4, 13. And I'm so excited for this new series because I know without a shadow of a doubt, the way the Lord is moving in this season, that is very imperative that we understand our identity in Jesus Christ. And we're going to understand it on a level of maturity. So I'm grateful and I'm thankful for this series. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for all the love. Thank you guys that's been faithfully subscribed and listening to the voice of God through me. I am just a vessel just like you are. And thank you for trusting the God in me. At the end of the day, we are all learning. This journey is a learning, forever learning journey. We don't arrive in the room of the spirit. And I pray today that you will learn more and more your identity as you listen to this series. And as you go and follow through with these scriptures, what, write these scriptures down. Be a good steward over the word. And I pray that God would encounter you like never before in this season. And you will see him, see yourself as he see you in the kingdom of heaven. And thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for being here today. And until next week, I'll talk to you guys then.